This swashbuckling adventure is all about the Pirates of the Caribbean and the Curse of the Black Pearl. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it's time to turn the page when you hear this sound. Are you ready? Sail away with me now. Elizabeth Swan stood on the deck of an English sailing ship, dreaming of adventures in Port Royal, a Caribbean island where she and her father were going to live. She began to sing a favorite song. Yo, yo, ho, a pirate's life for me. An old sailor hushed her. Quiet, Missy. Cursed pirates sail these waters. You don't want to bring them down in the snow, do you? I think it'd be rather exciting to meet a pirate. Then Elizabeth looked across the waves and spotted something. Look, there's a boy in the water! The sailors pulled the boy to safety. Elizabeth knelt beside him, and the boy woke. Will Turner... Then he passed out again. Around his neck, Elizabeth saw a gold medallion with an Aztec skull carved on it. He's a pirate, she thought. Quickly, she slipped the medallion from his neck and hid it. Years passed, and Elizabeth and Will grew up. They cared very much for each other, but Will was just a blacksmith, and Elizabeth was a governor's daughter. So they believed they could never marry. But some things were about to change. On a hot day, Elizabeth and her father attended Captain Norrington's promotion ceremony near the city walls high above the sea. Unknown to them, a clever pirate named Jack Sparrow was on the docks below. He had come to try to steal a ship, and he was talking with sentries who guarded the fastest ship in the harbor, the Interceptor. The guards were confident. There's no ship can match the Interceptor for speed. I've heard of one. It's supposed to be very fast, nigh uncatchable. The Black Pearl. Suddenly, a terrified scream rang out. Elizabeth had fallen from the cliffs and was plummeting toward the sea. Jack dove into the water. As he pulled Elizabeth safely onto the dock, he saw the Aztec medallion around her neck. Where did you get that? Suddenly, Captain Norrington and his men were there with swords at Jack's throat. Norrington saw the letter P, or pirate, tattooed on Jack's arm. Well, well. Jack Sparrow, isn't it? But Jack was clever and lightning fast. He grabbed a rope and swung up and up, away from the dock and over the streets. He dropped to the ground and ran. Holy seals! Slipping through the foggy streets, Jack ducked into a blacksmith shop. He was hammering the chains from his arms when Will Turner came in. You're the one they're hunting. The pirate. Jack studied Will's face. You seem somewhat familiar. Have I threatened you before? Will grabbed a sword and began to fight with Jack. The men dueled on and on, their blades ringing and flashing faster and faster. Will was an excellent swordsman, but Jack was trickier. It looked as if he might escape until the blacksmith sneaked up from behind and hit him over the head. With a thud, Jack went down. When he awoke, he was surrounded by Norrington's troops. This time, there was no escaping. In a dungeon cell deep beneath Fort Charles, Jack watched three seedy-looking prisoners trying to tempt a mutt to bring them the keys to their cell. Through the barred window from out at sea came the thud of distant explosions, followed by a high whistling noise, and then cannonballs slammed into the fort walls. One of those guns. It's the Pearl. Cannonballs hammered at the town, exploding buildings, docks, ships, and walls. Villagers ran for cover as they dodged flying wood and chunks of stone. Rampaging pirates stormed ashore and raced through the streets, smashing doors and windows, grabbing whatever they found, and setting fires. Elizabeth heard them crash into the mansion. She ran from room to room, trying to escape. But wherever she ran, a pirate was waiting for her. At last, she ducked into a closet. We know you're here, Poppet. Poppet. We will find you, Poppet. You've got something of ours, and it calls to us. 
A pirate yanked the door open and pulled her out. Thinking quickly, Elizabeth yelled. Parley! I invoke the right of Parley. According to the code, you have to take me to your captain. On the Black Pearl's lantern-lit deck, Elizabeth watched Captain Barbosa's shadowy figure approach. <laughs> he bared his gold and silver teeth in an evil grin. You have a name, Missy. Elizabeth didn't want the pirates to know she was the governor's daughter. Elizabeth Turner, I want you to leave and never come back. <laughs> no. Elizabeth pulled the Aztec medallion from her neck as she walked to the edge of the ship. Very well. I'll drop it. No. No. <laughs> Welcome aboard the Black Pearl, Miss Turner. Barbosa sailed the Black Pearl out to sea. Elizabeth was now a prisoner. Seeing Elizabeth kidnapped by pirates, Will knew only one man who could help save her, Jack Sparrow. He charged into the dungeon. You are familiar with that ship, the Black Pearl? Where does it make birth? Captain Barbosa and his crew of miscreants sailed from the dreaded Ila de Muerta. It's an island that cannot be found except by those who already know where it is. Will reminded Jack of someone he had once known. When he learned Will's full name, Will Turner, Jack finally agreed to help him find and rescue Elizabeth. If you spring me from this cell, I shall take you to the Black Pearl and your bonnie lass. With Will's help, Jack was free in moments. The two men ran for the docks. They planned to commandeer the fastest ship around, the Interceptor. With Norrington after them, Jack and Will commandeered the Interceptor and put out to sea. Meanwhile, Elizabeth dined with Captain Barbosa on the Black Pearl and listened to his tale about the mysterious medallion. This is Aztec gold. One of 882 identical pieces they delivered in a stone chest to Cortez himself. But the greed of Cortez was insatiable. So the heathen gods placed upon the gold a terrible curse. There is one way we can end our curse. All the scattered pieces of the Aztec gold must be restored and the blood repaid. Thanks to ye, we have the final piece. Suddenly, Elizabeth realized the truth. Barbosa wanted her blood to end the curse. She ran, but Barbosa caught her. Elizabeth plunged a dinner knife into his chest. Calmly, he pulled it out. Elizabeth gasped. There was no wound. Terrified, Elizabeth ran onto the deck and stopped, unable to move or scream. As moonlight streamed down upon Barbosa's pirate crew, she saw not flesh and blood men, but skeletons. Barbosa spun her around, and Elizabeth looked into a grinning skull. Look! The moonlight shows us for what we really are. We are not among the living, and so we cannot die. You best start believing in ghost stories, Miss Turner. You're in one. On their way to Tortuga to pick up a ship's crew, Jack told Will that his father, bootstrap Bill Turner, had been a pirate. Pirate is in your blood, boy, so you'll have to square with that someday. In the filthy port, Jack found his old friend, Gibbs, sleeping in the mud. Gibbs thought Jack was a fool, but they both knew that Barbosa needed special blood to end the curse. Jack pointed to Will. That is the child of bootstrap Bill Turner. Jack thought he could exchange Will for the Black Pearl, which Barbosa had stolen from him. With Gibbs' help, a rough, weather-beaten crew was soon sailing with Jack through a howling storm. They were catching up to the Black Pearl and its ghostly crew. But would they arrive at Isla de Muerta in time to save Elizabeth? As Jack steered the Interceptor through a graveyard of wrecked ships surrounding the island, Will asked Gibbs about the pirate's history. Gibbs told him that when Jack was captain of the Black Pearl, the first mate tricked him into giving up the secret route to the Aztec treasure. Then the mate led a mutiny and marooned Jack on a deserted island with just one pistol and a single shot. But Jack, 
He escaped the island, and he still has that single shot. Oh, he won't use it, though, save on one man. He's mutinous for his mate. Barbosa. Aye. Jack approached. It was time to go ashore. As the long boat was lowered, Jack turned to Gibbs. Keep to the carriage. Any man who falls behind is left behind. Rowing to a hiding place, Jack and Will looked down into a vast, treasure-filled cavern where Barbosa stood gripping Elizabeth beside an Aztec stone chest filled with coins. Barbosa raised a stone knife. Our torment is near an end! Knocking Jack out of the way, Will scrambled down to save Elizabeth. At that moment, Barbosa cut Elizabeth's hand, smeared her blood on the medallion, and dropped it into the chest. Nothing happened. The curse was not lifted. Was your father William Turner? No. The pirates got angry. You brought us the wrong person! Quarreling and shouting among themselves, the pirates did not see Will help Elizabeth slip away, taking the medallion with them. Suddenly, Barbosa noticed that the medallion was gone. Furious, he ordered his pirates to fetch it back. Just then, Jack appeared. I know he's glad you need. When Will and Elizabeth reached the interceptor, Will told them Jack had fallen behind. Keeping to the pirate's code, the crew weighed anchor and sailed away, leaving Jack as Barbosa's prisoner once again on the Black Pearl. Barbosa had refused to negotiate. He vowed to chase the interceptor down and get the medallion back, and this time he'd spare no one. With the Black Pearl gaining on them, Jack's crew tossed their cannonballs overboard to lighten their load and increase their speed, but it was not enough. They had to stand and fight. They loaded their cannons with anything they could find, including silverware, and fired. Smoke filled the air. Jack escaped and swung over to the interceptor, but he was too late. The ship was badly damaged and out of ammunition. Then Will made a brave decision. It was his blood Barbosa wanted. He'd give them the medallion and himself to save the others. But as he rushed into the cabin to fetch the medallion, Will saw Barbosa's monkey grab it and scamper away. Suddenly, a cannonball shattered the interceptor's mast, and it crashed across the cabin hatch. Will was trapped inside, and water was pouring in. Elizabeth struggled to free Will. But as the water rose, Will lost his grip and disappeared. As the battle smoke cleared, Barbosa had won. Jack and his crew were tied up on the deck of the Black Pearl, and Barbosa had the medallion. But he still did not have the person whose blood he needed. Suddenly, Will appeared dripping on the side of the ship. He pointed a pistol at himself. My name is Will Turner. My father was Bootstrap Bill Turner. His blood runs in my veins. Do as I say, or I'll pull this trigger and be lost to Davy Jones' locker. Barbosa was forced to agree to Will's terms. He would not harm Elizabeth or Jack and his crew, and Will would return with him to Isla de Muerta. But Barbosa was tricky. Instead of harming Elizabeth and Jack, he marooned them on a deserted island. It was the same one he'd left Jack on before. It was a smuggler's island, with caves full of stolen rum. Thinking fast, Elizabeth poured rum on anything that would burn and set it ablaze. Soon smoke poured skyward, signaling to the English Navy. Within hours, Elizabeth and Jack were safely aboard the Dauntless with her father and Norrington. When the two commanders finally agreed to help rescue Will, Jack told them his plan. He would go into the cavern and send the pirates out. When the Dauntless arrived, Norrington surrounded the cavern entrance with longboats full of his marines. At the same time, Elizabeth escaped from her ship cabin and rode to the Black Pearl to free Jack's crew. Inside the torch-lit cavern, Barbosa shoved Will to his knees beside the stone chest. Will's life was in danger. Barbosa lifted his knife. Aye! But a shout rang out. It was Jack. The HMS Dauntless is floating just offshore. You order your men to row out to the Dauntless. They do what they do best. There you are with two ships. But what of the Pearl? Name me, Captain. 
but instead of ordering his men to row to the Dauntless, Barbosa told them to walk. This was not in Jack's plan. Silently, the pirates stepped into the water. Overhead, the moon broke through the clouds and shone on them. One by one, they turned to skeletons, walking on the ocean floor, underneath Norrington, and straight to the Dauntless. But Jack would not give up. Tossing Will a sword and grabbing one for himself, Jack attacked Barbosa. While Will held the remaining pirates off, Jack and Barbosa do. The cavern rang with the sound of clashing swords. Suddenly, Barbosa plunged his sword into Jack. Jack staggered back, but he wasn't wounded. As the moonlight hit him, he turned into a skeleton. A skeleton with an Aztec coin. Couldn't resist, mate. On and on the two skeletons fought, locked in a battle neither could win. At the Dauntless, the skeleton pirates climbed aboard and attacked the unsuspecting sailors. Swords clashed, pistol shots rang out. From his stakeout, Norrington heard the sound of fighting. Make for the ship! As Norrington and his men rode for the Dauntless, Elizabeth reached the Black Pearl. She freed Jack's crew and helped them rid the ship of the remaining pirates. But there was more to be done. All of you with me! What is in that cave and we must save him! But Jack's crew refused to help. They had orders to keep the code. Furious, Elizabeth rode to the island alone, while the Black Pearl sailed away. Onward the Dauntless, the skeleton crew turned the cannons on Norrington and began to fire. In the cavern, Barbosa and Jack tooled in and out of moonlight, turning from living men to skeletons and back again. Then Elizabeth appeared. Barbosa aimed his pistol at her, but before he fired, another shot echoed through the cavern. Barbosa looked down at a hole in his shirt, then at Jack. He held a smoking pistol. Ten years you carry that pistol, now you waste your shot. He didn't waste it. Will was beside the Aztec chest. He opened his bleeding fist and dropped the blood-smeared medallion into the chest. The curse was lifted. Barbosa was mortal, and Jack's pistol shot had finished him. He fell forward and lay still. The curse was lifted from all the pirate skeletons. One by one, they dropped their weapons as they realized they were mortal and could be destroyed. The Black Pearl was gone and they had no escape. Surrounded by Norrington's cheering marines, the pirates were captive. In the cavern, Will and Elizabeth watched Jack cut his arm, wipe the blood on his coin, and drop it into the chest. With a grinding sound, the lid slammed shut. But Jack's ship was gone. If he wanted to leave the dreadful island, he had to go onto the Dauntless. And once again, he was a prisoner. Just a pirate, like all the rest. Back at Fort Charles, it seemed that Jack's luck had finally run out. But as he stood on the gallows, Will shoved through the crowd and cut his friend free. They raced for the dock, but Norrington and his men surrounded them with raised rifles. Then Elizabeth stepped between Will and Norrington. Norrington looked at her and ordered his men to lower their rifles. Jack sprang to the top of the sea wall. Behind him, the Black Pearl sailed into view. His crew had returned for him. Gentlemen, you will always remember this as the day that you almost caught. Captain Jack Sparrow. Jack leapt into the water and swam to his ship. Once again, he was free to roam the Caribbean. This is the story of the Pirates of the Caribbean and the Dead Man's Chest. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear this sound. Are you ready? Sail away with me now. High on the walls of a Turkish prison overlooking the sea, Captain Jack Sparrow hid in a wooden coffin, waiting for the guards to toss it into the ocean. 
As it hit the waves, Jack scrambled out. In his hand, he clutched a drawing of a key. Back on board his ship, the Black Pearl, Jack showed the drawing to his crew. Gentlemen, what do keys do? Keys unlock things? And whatever this key unlocks, inside there's something valuable. So we're setting out to find whatever this key unlocks. No. If we don't have the key, we can't open whatever it is we don't have that it unlocks. So what purpose would be served in finding whatever need be unlocked, which we don't have, without first having found the key what unlocks it? So they set off to find the key. But Jack's compass wasn't working properly, and he didn't know which way to sail. That night, as Jack paced the deck, a pale figure stepped from the shadows. It was Bootstrap Bill with a message. Time's run out, Jack. He sent me. Davy Jones. You made a deal with him too, Jack. He raised the pearl from the depths for you. Thirteen years you've been a captain. The technique, Jack. You won't be able to talk yourself out of this. The terms would apply to me, apply to you as well. One soul, bound to crew a hundred years upon a ship. Yes, but the Flying Dutchman already has a captain, so there's really no... That is the locker for you. Jones is terrible. Leviathan will find you. He'll drag the pearl back to the depths and you along with it. As Bootstrap spoke, a black spot appeared on Jack's hand. Terrified, he shouted at his crew. On Jack, all hands! Run, keep running! Do we have a heading? Run! Land! Which port? In Zaypo! Said land! Any land! Ah! Meanwhile, in Port Royale, Elizabeth Swan and Will Turner had their own troubles. Lord Cutler Beckett, head of the East India Trading Company, had arrested them for piracy. Beckett addressed his prisoner. By your efforts, Jack Sparrow was set free. I would like you to go to him and recover a certain property in his possession. Recover? At the point of a sword? Bargain. You will offer what amounts to a full pardon. Jack will be free, a privateer in the employ of England. Jack must find his place in the new world or perish. Not unlike you, Mr. Turner. You and your fiancé face the hangman's noose. So you get both Jack and the Black Pearl? A ship, hardly. The item in question's considerably smaller and far more valuable. Something Sparrow keeps on his person at all times. A compass? Bring back that compass. Or there's no deal. Will accepted the deal. He left to tell Elizabeth who was still being held in a prison cell. Elizabeth was worried. Jack's compass. What does Beckett want with that? Does it matter? I have faith in you. Both of you. But when Will left, Elizabeth began making her own plans. Will searched the seas for days. At last, he spied the Black Pearl stranded on the beach of a deserted island. A deathly silence hung over the island. Will's shouts echoed strangely as he thrashed through the deep jungle. Jack! Jack Sparrow! Meanwhile, in Port Royal, Elizabeth escaped her prison cell, sneaked into Beckett's offices, and held him at gunpoint. I'm here to negotiate. I'm listening intently. These letters of Mark, they are signed by the king. You're making great efforts to ensure Jack Sparrow's freedom. He's not going to Jack. Oh, really? To ensure Mr. Turner's freedom, then? I'll still want that compass. Disguising herself as a sailor, she stowed away on a ship to go in search of Will. As Will crashed through the jungle, cannibals surrounded him. Ah! Numbing him with poison darts, they carried him to their village. There, on a throne of bones and skulls, sat Jack Sparrow. Jack, it's me! Will Turner! Tell him to let me down! To Will's confusion and anger, Jack ignored him. But as the cannibals dragged Will away, Jack leaned towards him slightly. Save me! Will was horrified when he realized the truth. Jack was a captive, too. Ha! 
High above a gorge hung two cagers made of human bones and jammed full of Jack's pirate crew. The cannibal shoved Will inside a cage with Jack's first mate, Gibbs. The Pelagostas made Jack their chief, but he only remains chief as long as he acts like a chief. The Pelagostas believe that Jack is a god in human form, and they intend to do him the honor of releasing him from his fleshy prison. They'll roast him and eat him. The feast is about to begin. Jack's life will end. The drums stop. Will knew he had to do something. He ordered the pirates to swing the cages toward the canyon walls where thick vines grew. Rocking back and forth, the pirates grasped the vines. Come on, men! Put your legs through! Start the climb! But as they reached the top of the gorge, a cannibal guard saw them. He raced for the village, shouting the alarm. Ah, bye bye. Screaming in anger, the cannibals raced after the escaping pirates, leaving Jack alone. Taking his final chance to escape, Jack jerked himself free and sped toward the beach where the Black Pearl waited. He reached it just as Will and the rest of his crew raced up. Dodging hordes of screeching cannibals, the men leapt on board and cast off. Gibbs greeted his captain. Let's put some distance between us and this island and head out to open sea. Yes to the first, yes to the second, but only insofar as we keep to the shallows as much as possible. Safe for a time, we'll ask Jack for his compass. Jack, ah. Elizabeth is in danger. I need that compass of yours, Jack. I must trade it for her freedom. Finally, Jack made Will a deal. I shall trade you the compass if you will help me to find this. He showed him the drawing of an unusual key. When Will agreed, Jack told him there was only one person who could tell them where it was. The mysterious... Tia Dalma. Later that night, they rode up a dark, swampy river to Tia Dalma's rambling shack. She was waiting for them, as if she had known they would come. <laughs> Tia Dalma nodded knowingly when Jack showed her the drawing of the key. Your key go to a chest. And it is what lay inside the chest you seek, don't it? You know our David Jones, yes? What exactly did he put into the chest? Him heart. Him carve out him heart. Lock it away in a chest and hide the chest from the world. The king, he keep with him at all times. To get it, Will would have to sneak on board the Flying Dutchman ship and take the key from Jones. Tia Dalma told them where to seek the ghostly ship, and she gave Jack a jar of dirt. David Jones cannot step on land but once every ten years. Land is where you are safe, Jack Sparrow. And so you will carry land with you. As Jack and Will searched for the Flying Dutchman, they saw a shipwreck on a rocky shore. Jack's blood ran cold. This was the work of Davy Jones. As Will prepared to board the ship, Jack gave him some advice. If you do happen to get captured, just say Jack Sparrow sent you to settle his debt. Might save your life. On the ship deck, Will saw faceless dead men scattered everywhere. Suddenly the wind began to howl and the ghostly flying Dutchman rose from the churning sea. Moments later, Davy Jones stood before Will. What is your purpose here? Jack Sparrow. Send me to settle his debt. Davy Jones was furious. <laughs> On board the Black Pearl, Jack watched and waited. Suddenly, he heard Davy Jones' angry voice behind him. You have a debt to pay. You have my payment. One soul to serve on your ship is already over there. One soul is not equal to another. Just how many souls do you think my soul is worth? Desperate to escape his dreaded fate, Jack bargained with Jones. Shall we seal him blood? He would bring him 100 souls in three days in exchange for his own freedom. Jones agreed. I keep the boy. A good faith payment. That leaves you only 99 more to go. <laughs> it seemed that Will would be doomed 
forever. Jack and his crew sailed to Tortuga to find souls for Davy Jones. There they met Jack's old enemy, James Norrington. Desperate and half-crazed, Norrington signed on. To Jack's amazement, so did someone else, Elizabeth Swan. She wanted Jack's help finding Will. Jack gave Elizabeth his compass. Poor Will has been press-ganged into Davy Jones's crew. All I want is to find Will. Well, there is a chest of unknown size and origin. And whoever possesses that chest possesses the leverage to command Jones to do whatever it is he or she wants. With this, this compass does not point north. It points to the thing you want most in this world. And what you want most in this world is to find the chest of Davy Jones, is it not? To save Will? By finding the chest of Davy Jones. In Elizabeth's hands, the compass worked. Steadily, the needle swung around till it pointed to Ila Crucis, the Isle of Crosses. Aboard the Flying Dutchman, Will waited and watched for his chance to get the key. At last, one night while Joan slept, Will crept into his quarters and carefully removed the key from the chain around his neck. Then he hurried to the longboat where his father waited. Now get yourself to land and stay there. It was always in my blood to die at sea. But it was not a fate I ever wanted for you. I'll find a way to sever Jones's hold on you and not rest until this blade pierces his heart. With that, Will rode away into the night. Many long, wet, cold hours later, a passing trading ship rescued Will from the longboat. Will begged the ship's captain to sail away as fast as he could, but it was too late. The Flying Dutchman was on the horizon. Will grew pale. I've done this all. With a sickening jolt, the ship lurched to a stop. The sea boiled with foam as a huge, slimy tentacle rose from the waves. Will watched, powerless, as it snatched the captain, threw him into the air, and broke him like a twig. It was the Kraken, sent by Jones to destroy Will and whoever helped him. Nothing and no one could stop it. Its huge tentacles swept screaming sailors into the sea, smashed the longboats, and snapped the mast in two. Will fell overboard. As he sank beneath the waves, he saw the Kraken pull the ship down. In an instant, all that was left was a trail of shattered wood and broken bodies. The shadow of the Flying Dutchman drifted above Will as he surfaced. He snatched at its hull and hauled himself up, clinging to a small crack in the wood. Above him, he heard one of the crew tell Davy Jones some disturbing news. The boy's not here. He must have been playing by the sea. I am the sea. The chase is no longer safe. Charter course to Ila Cruces. Get me there first or there'll be the devil to pay. Wet and shaking with cold, Will hung on. He was still alive. And he would reach Ila Cruces with Davy Jones. At last, Jack and his crew reached Ila Crucis and rowed ashore. Elizabeth led Jack and Norrington toward an ancient abandoned church. Then she stopped with a confused look. The compass needle suddenly began to spin. It doesn't work. And it certainly doesn't show you what you want most. Yes, it does. You're sitting on it. My pardon? Jack pushed her aside as he and Norrington began to dig. They quickly uncovered a large chest. Inside it was a small chest of solid iron. And from inside that, they heard the rhythm of a muffled heartbeat. No one saw the Flying Dutchman approach. As the cursed crew prepared to go ashore, Will swam to the beach. 
In no time, he found Jack, Elizabeth, and Norrington staring at the iron chest before them. It's real. You actually were telling the truth. I do that quite a lot, yet people are always surprised. With good reason. It was Will. He pushed his way through and made for the chest. I'm gonna kill Jones. Can't let you do that, William. Because if Jones is dead, who's to call his terrible beastie off the hunt, eh? Only Davy Jones could control the Kraken. If Jones died, the monster would never stop. Jack's plan was to use the chest to make Jones call his monster off forever. Then Norrington stepped between them. He wanted to take the chest to Lord Cutler Beckett. Each man needed the chest for different reasons. They drew their swords, charged each other, and began to battle for the key. As Jack and the others fought, Jones' crew rose from the sea. Jack snatched the key from Will and opened the chest. He grabbed the heart, dashed to the beach, and stuffed it into his jar of dirt. But Jones' crew surrounded them. There was no escape. Suddenly, Norrington grabbed the chest and ran, drawing the fiends away. Into the boat. Don't wait for me. As the ghoulish crew closed in, Norrington dropped the chest. Here you go. In a flash, the crew and the chest disappeared. As the Black Pearl sped away, the Flying Dutchman shot up from the depths beside it and opened fire. Jack dropped his jar and shattered at his feet. The heart was gone. Groaning, the Black Pearl shuddered to a stop. In the deathly silence, the Kraken rose from the sea. Will shouted orders to the terrified crew. Too long! Run out the cannons and hold for my signal! Fire! Blasted by the cannons, the Kraken drew back. But Will knew it would attack again. We have to get off the ship. But the Kraken had destroyed all the longboats except one. And Jack Sparrow was in it, rowing toward land. Will and the crew loaded the cargo net with barrels of gunpowder and swung it out over the rail. Then Will gave Elizabeth a rifle. Whatever you do, don't miss. He leapt on top and called out to the Kraken. Come on! Come and get it! I'm over here! With a roar, the Kraken shot up, tangling its tentacles on the cargo net. As Elizabeth took aim, the ship lurched and she fell. Then she saw Jack. His compass had pointed him back to the Black Pearl and her. Jack grabbed the rifle and fired as Will leapt away. The gunpowder exploded, ripping the Kraken's tentacles apart and setting them on fire. Again, the Kraken fell back, but Jack knew it would return. Abandon ship into the longboat. Will and the crew rushed for the longboat, but Elizabeth turned to Jack. You came back. I always knew you were a good man. And then she kissed him. A long kiss that lasted as she pushed him backwards. Jack heard a loud click and opened his eyes. Elizabeth had chained him to the mast. It's after you, not the ship. It's not us. But this is the only way, don't you see? I'm not sorry. Jack smiled at Elizabeth. Pirates. Elizabeth raced to the longboat and climbed in with Will and the others. Will looked around. Where's Jack? He elected to stay behind to give us a chance. Go! From a distance, Will, Elizabeth, and the crew watched the Kraken pull the Black Pearl beneath the waves. Jack Sparrow had gone down with his ship. On board the Flying Dutchman, Davy Jones' men set his chest down before him. He smiled as he began to open it. Jack Sparrow, I will take his settled. Seconds later, a terrible roar of anger rang out. His heart was gone. Far away in Port Royal, Norrington was brought before oh, Lord Cutler Beckett. He placed the pardon documents, promised to Will and Elizabeth, before him. 
I took the liberty of filling in my name. If you intend to claim these, then you must have something to trade. Do you have the compass? Better. He placed a burlap sack on Beckett's desk. The heart of Davy Jones. The crafty Beckett smiled. Days later, Will, Elizabeth, and Gibbs sat with Tia Dalma in her shack, remembering Jack. She studied them closely. Will you sail to the ends of the earth and beyond to fetch back with you, Jack? They stared at her as if she was crazy. Then, as one person, they shouted, Aye! Tia Dalma was pleased. All right. But if you go and brave the weird and haunted shores at world's end, then you will need a captain who knows those waters. At the top of her stairs, the door opened, and Captain Barbosa walked into the room. <laughs> This is the story of the Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it's time to turn the page when you hear this sound. Are you ready? Sail away with me now. At the docks in Singapore, a woman's voice rose through the swirling fog. Moments later, Elizabeth Swan stepped out of her small boat. Chinese pirates surrounded her instantly. Their leader, Tai Wang, glared at her. Dangerous song to be singing. For any who are ignorant of its meaning. Suddenly, Captain Hector Barbosa appeared beside Elizabeth. Your master's expecting us. In a crumbling bathhouse, Sao Feng was waiting. He had caught Will Turner trying to steal his ancient navigational charts to the world beyond this one, and he was suspicious. You intend to attempt a voyage to David Jones Log? Why? Barbosa tossed Sao Feng a silver piece of eight. We must convene the Brethren Court. The East India Trading Company, led by Lord Cutler Beckett, was challenging the pirates' rule of the seas. The Brethren had to fight or lose their way of life forever. But one pirate lord was missing. Jack Sparrow holds one of the nine pieces of eight. So we must go and get him back. Suddenly, the bathhouse windows shattered. East India Trading Company agents poured in, pistols blazing. Explosions rocked the bathhouse. As Elizabeth and Barbosa battled their way back to the dock, Will offered Cao Feng a secret deal in exchange for the charts. Hiding in the shadows, an agent named Mercer heard them. He rushed to tell Beckett what he had learned. The brethren were convening, but he didn't know where. For days, Barbosa and his crew sailed through silent, frozen seas. Will studied the ancient charts, rotating the circles and trying to decipher the strange words. Over the edge. Over again. Summary says. Flash of green. One of the crew, named Pintel, explained the flash of green. It signals when a soul comes back to this world from the dead. In the distance, Will saw white mist stretching to infinity. Raging water thundered and roared as it pulled the ship over an endless waterfall into darkness. They had reached the edge of the world. Barbosa's crew stumbled from their wrecked ship onto a deserted shore. A white hot sun burned in a cloudless sky. Elizabeth gazed at the endless emptiness. I don't see Jack. But Tia Dalma had read the signs. Witty Jack is closer than you think. 
Just then, the Black Pearl appeared sailing across the burning desert sands on the backs of 10,000 crabs. Jack Sparrow was at the helm. Elizabeth ran to greet him. We've come to rescue you. It's very kind of you. But it would seem that as I possess a ship and you don't, you're the ones in need of rescuing. But no one knew how to return to the land of the living. If they didn't escape before sunset, they were doomed to sail between the worlds forever. Jack studied the chart's mysterious words. Up is down. Suddenly, he understood. They had to roll the boat over. Jack and the crew raced from one side of the ship to the other, rocking it wildly. As the sun began to sink, Jack shouted. Now up is down. The Black Pearl rolled over and spun back up. A green light flashed on the horizon. We're back. They were back. As the Pearl stopped at a small island to fill the water barrels, South End ship appeared. And right behind was Beckett on the Endeavor. Will had promised to deliver Jack in exchange for command of the Pearl. I need the Pearl. That's the only reason I came on this voyage. Jack was escorted to meet Beckett. He wanted information. Who the pirate wants? Where are they meeting? If Jack refused Where to tell, he would hang. At last, Jack agreed to lead Beckett to Shipwreck Cove. But being tricky Jack Sparrow, he had his own plans. Meanwhile, Barbosa tried to convince Cao Feng to help them escape. Cao Feng thought the odds were too great against them. They have a Dutchman. Now the Pearl! And what do the brethren have? Calypso. The goddess herself, bound in human form. Cao Feng agreed on one condition. Elizabeth would come with him. Driving Beckett's men from the Pearl. Cao Feng sailed away on the Empress under cover of cannon fire from the Pearl. Jack flipped the cannon over, tied a rope to its base, and swung back to the Black Pearl. Tossing Will in the brig, Jack set sail with the Endeavor and Flying Dutchman in pursuit. That night, Cao Feng visited Elizabeth in his luxurious cabin. He believed she was Calypso. Before Elizabeth could explain, explosions, cannon fire, and pistol shot ripped through the night. The Flying Dutchman was attacking. Cao Feng fell with a spear of broken wood buried in his chest. He ripped the captain's knot pendant from his chest and gave it to Elizabeth. Take it. You will be free. Go in my place. To shipwreck Cove. Now Elizabeth was captain of the Empress and one of the pirate lords. But a few moments later, she was a hostage imprisoned in the Flying Dutchman's brig. She called for Will's father. Bootstrap. Slowly, Will's father, bootstrap Bill Turner, emerged from the ship's hull and warned her about Will's plans to save him. If he saves me, he loses you. Tell him to stay away. Tell him it's too late. I'm already a part of the ship. Later that night, Elizabeth escaped the brig and crawled across the tow line back to the Empress. Meanwhile, Will had escaped the Black Pearl's brig and was leaving a trail for Beckett. Will wanted to save his father from Davy Jones, but if he succeeded, he knew he would lose Elizabeth. To Will's surprise, Jack offered to stab Jones's heart and bind himself to the Dutchman. He gave Will his compass and shoved him overboard. Our regards to Davy Jones. When Beckett and Jones plucked Will from the sea, he presented his demands. You will free my father. And you will guarantee Elizabeth's safety. Along with my own. Then he held up Jack's compass. What is it you want most? The circles of double-crossing deals, betrayals, and secret plans were drawing tighter. 
and at their center was Shipwreck Cove. As the rocky cliffs of Shipwreck Island came into view, Tia Dalma commanded Barbosa to force the Brethren to free her. Barbosa refused. It took nine pirate lords to bind you, Calypso. And it'll take no less than nine to set you free. He threw her in the brig and sailed into an enormous dark tunnel hidden in the cliffs. Deep in the island, the Brethren were gathered for the first time in many lifetimes. Barbosa called them to order. I convene this, the fourth Brethren Court. Your pieces of eight, my fellow captains. One by one, the pirate lords tossed their pieces of eight into a wooden bowl. But Jack fingered the circlet coin in his braid and hesitated. Might I point out that we are still short one pirate lord, and I'm as content as a cucumber to wait until South Hang joins us. Elizabeth's voice rang out, and she strode into the room. South Hang is dead. Jack was stunned and a little upset to see her wearing the captain's knot pendant. You made you, Captain? But she had even more news. Our location has been betrayed. Jones is under the command of Lord Beckett. They're on their way here. Elizabeth wanted to fight, but the pirate lords believed they had no chance against the Flying Dutchman. Then Barbosa revealed his plan. Gentlemen, ladies, we must free Calypso. The pirates roared with anger. The gathering quickly disintegrated into a pushing, shoving, yelling, kicking brawl. Jack agreed with Elizabeth. We must fight. But according to the pirate code, an act of war could only be declared by a pirate king. And that meant electing one. Every captain voted for themselves. But with both Jack's vote and her own, Elizabeth was elected King of the Brethren. Her orders were simple. At dawn, we're at war. Amidst the cheers and shouts, Jack saw Raggetti take the bull with the pieces of eight, but he kept quiet. The pieces of his own plan were now in place. At dawn, the Black Pearl and the pirate fleet prepared for battle. As the Endeavor sailed into view through the morning fog, the pirates screamed their blood-curdling battle cries. Then the fog lifted and silence fell. Hundreds of ships, the entire armada of the East India Trading Company, surrounded them. The Flying Dutchman was in the lead. All eyes turned to Jack, but he had only one suggestion. Polly. Meeting on a narrow, windy beach, Elizabeth proposed an exchange. Will leaves with us. And you can take Jack. As Jack walked toward Beckett, he dropped his circlet coin in the sand. His eyes met Barbosa. Beckett was certain of victory. He didn't see Barbosa pick up the coin and close his fist around it. Barbosa had Jack Sparrow's piece of eight. And now he was going to do what he had always wanted. Release Calypso. Back on the Pearl, Rigetti tied Tia Dalma to the mast and bound her hands. Barbosa tore the captain's knot from Elizabeth's throat, dropped it in the bowl, and set the pieces on fire. Then Rigetti spoke. Calypso? Release you from your human bonds. Tia Dalma began to grow. The ropes and manacles snapped as she rose towering above them. Barbosa knelt before her. Unleash your fury upon those who dare pretend themselves your masters. Or mine. Calypso screamed. Then she dissolved onto the deck in the form of 10,000 crabs. They scurried over the side of the ship. She was gone. And so were Barbosa's hopes. There was only one choice left. Fight. Elizabeth sounded the call. Listen! The Brethren will still be looking for the Black Pearl to lead. Gentlemen. Hoist the colors. On every ship, 
The pirates' fleet echoed her cry and raised their flags. The ships surged forward, and the wind began to rise. Clouds swirled overhead, forming a whirling disk of blackness. Lightning stabbed the sea, and where it hit, a giant whirlpool opened. The Black Pearl and Flying Dutchman plunged into the swirling abyss. The two ships spun closer, their giant masts tilting toward each other. Joan's crew swarmed onto the Black Pearl, fighting beside Elizabeth. Will shouted over the din. Elizabeth! Will you marry me? I love you. Elizabeth parried an attacker and shouted to Barbosa. Marry us! Barbosa raced through the ceremony. There was time for one kiss, and the fight was on again. On the Dutchman, Jack grabbed the chest from Jones's cabin and swung up into the rigging. Jones was right behind. The key to the chest was clutched in one of his tentacles. Jack slashed that tentacle off. It fell, writhing and spurting black ink. As the ship's mass slammed together, Jack dropped the chest and fell. Jones caught it and heaved Jack into the air. But Jack grabbed the line, swung down, and snatched a pistol from a crewman. More pistol! Will swung over from the Black Pearl, grabbed the chest, and ran. But Bootstrap Bill stood in his way. Not recognizing him, he slashed at Will furiously. It's me! It's Will! Your son! As Will defended himself, the chest slid from his grasp. Elizabeth swung to the Dutchman and held Jones at bay as Jack crawled to the chest, clutching the key. Will rushed to Defender, but with an evil grin, Jones plunged his sword into Will. As Will lay dying in Elizabeth's arms, Jack knew what had to be done. He buried his sword in Jones's heart, but Will's hand was on the hill. With an unearthly scream, Jones clutched his chest and plummeted into the abyss. Will Turner was the Dutchman's new captain. But the Dutchman was dragging the Black Pearl into the abyss. Firing cannons, Barbosa blasted the tangled masts apart. Holding Elizabeth, Jack swung off the Dutchman as it vanished beneath the waves. But the Endeavor was bearing down, preparing to blast the Pearl into oblivion. Suddenly, the Flying Dutchman soared from the depths. Will Turner was in command. His eyes blazed with avenging anger. Trapping the Endeavor between them, Will and Barbosa blew Beckett and his ship away. The battle was won. As pirate cheers rang out, Will freed his father, but Bootstrap refused to leave his son. On a deserted beach, Elizabeth met Will one last time. She promised to keep the chest safe for his return. Then he was gone. Ten years passed. One sunset, Elizabeth sat on the beach with her son and a familiar chest. As she watched the horizon, a flash of green lit her face. Will was coming home. 